Hey, what's up you guys? It's Annie back with another video where I help you to the confusion out of growth on YouTube and help you grow the successful YouTube channel of your dreams. Now, before we get into today's video, let me know if this is too distracting for you. I know not very many people actually have their microphones shown in the video, but I feel like having it closer to me is actually going to improve the sound of my audio and the audio quality. So let me know if this is super distracting to you or if you're okay with it. So about a month ago on my channel, I made a video on different mistakes that new YouTubers tend to make. And that video now has over 80,000 views in less than one month, which obviously means that you guys loved that video. Now, one lesson I've learned as far as getting views on YouTube goes is when you have a video that does particularly well on your channel, you should do everything in your power to recreate it or make a part two or make a series. So that is exactly what I'm doing in today's video. In today's video, I'm doing a part two to that video. So I'm gonna have part one linked down below if you guys want to check it out. And in today's video, I am bringing you guys six new mistakes that new YouTubers tend to make that slows down their growth and keeps them from growing. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. So the very first mistake a lot of new YouTubers tend to make is treating growth on YouTube as a one-step problem. So when a lot of people begin their YouTube channel, their first instinct is to look up on YouTube how to get subscribers, how to get views, how to grow your channel, and think that somehow they're gonna find find a one-step problem answer that basically tells them, do this one thing and you're gonna grow on YouTube. Unfortunately, not very many people are here to tell them that that's not how growth works on YouTube and nobody is here to actually put an end to that wrong belief. Because there is no magic formula for growth on YouTube, which is why I make all of these videos on my channel on SEO, ranking in search, how the algorithm works and how to grow on YouTube properly because there is no one specific method that will actually make you blow up and get famous on on YouTube. It's a journey of making mistakes, learning what works, learning what doesn't work, learning how the algorithm works and how to manipulate the algorithm, and how to grow organically on YouTube, which a lot of people don't want to accept, but it does take time and you do have to be patient and learn how to do it properly if you want to grow in the long run. Now, another mistake I see a lot of new YouTubers making, especially in my comment section, on my live streams, and especially in my DMs on Instagram, is when new YouTubers tell themselves and other other people. I'm doing absolutely everything I can possibly do to grow, but my channel is not growing. But here's the thing, you're not doing absolutely everything you can possibly do. Because if you're not growing, if you are seeing a plateau on your channel, there is a culprit somewhere. There is a reason why somewhere out there that is going to tell you why your channel is not growing. Either your thumbnails and titles are not drawing people in, or your videos are not being recommended on the recommended page, or you are not successfully getting your videos ranked in search. There is going to be something out there you are not doing or something that is not working or some reason out there why you're not growing. No YouTuber is ever going to find a time in their YouTube career or journey where they've done absolutely everything they can possibly do. There's nothing left to learn, nothing left to change. That just doesn't exist in the world of YouTube. Because the algorithm always changes, because the platform always changes, we always have to change with it. So if you are telling yourself you are doing absolutely everything possible but not growing, then you are basically placing a limiting belief on yourself and convincing yourself that it is somebody else's fault or something else that is at fault fault that is keeping you from growing your channel. So rather than wasting time telling yourself and or other people that you've done everything possible and you're not growing, I urge you to actually look at your channel and try to figure out what's not working. Look at your traffic sources and figure out what sources are not helping your videos to reach people. Look at your audience retention and try to figure out where people are leaving your videos and what you can fix. Try to look at your click-through rates and your thumbnails, which thumbnails are getting views and which ones aren't. There is never going to be any part of your journey where you've done absolutely everything possible and there's nothing else to change. So if you are seeing this plateau, I definitely 10 on 10 recommend you figure out why it's happening and what you can change. Another major reason for a plateaued growth is scattered content. If somebody goes onto your channel and your last five videos have nothing to do with each other, somebody's gonna end up asking themselves, what is this person channel for? What are they trying to do with this channel? And if they can't answer those questions for 
themselves, chances are they're not gonna subscribe to you. Whereas if I go on to let's say my friend Kyla's channel and I see her last few videos are about fitness and working out and getting in shape, obviously that is what her channel is about and that is the type of content I'm going to get if I subscribe to her. So one reason that is entirely possible why you're not growing is that you have way too much scattered content and people cannot figure out what your channel is about or what the main objective of your channel is and that is keeping them from wanting to subscribe to you because they don't know what they're going to be getting from you. So I definitely suggest looking at your channel, look at your last few videos in the last few days, last few weeks, and try to ask yourself, is there a cohesive theme between all of my last few videos or are they kind of all over the place? Because that is definitely one very common turnoff for people not subscribing to your channel. Another very, very big mistake I made myself is not having video titles that were enticing enough to make people click onto them. So I thought for the longest time, if I make my video titles, how to gain subscribers? That's a massive question loads of people have, so obviously that's gonna get clicks. But it didn't work for me. And what I realized is everybody and their mother who makes this type of content has the exact same thumbnail. So people have seen how to gain subscribers on YouTube a million times and I'm no different. So what I started doing was making my titles way more enticing, making people actually want to click them. So instead of saying things like how to gain subscribers, how to get views, I made them way more clickable by saying things like how I gained 11,000 subscribers in one month. When somebody reads that title, something goes off in their head. Like how in the heck did she do that? Is that even possible? Which is gonna make them wanna go onto my video and figure out how I did this, which is much more enticing than just how to gain subs. And one other thing I've learned about making my titles more enticing is to have more compound titles. So basically, if you've seen any of my recent videos, my titles are in two different pieces. So the first half of the title, the part that people actually see on the recommended page is the more enticing part of the title, like how I gained a thousand subscribers in a month, how I got over a million minutes of watch time in 30 days. The part of the title that actually makes them want to click onto the video. However, even though that part of the title is going to get clicks on the recommended page, Page, the suggested section, that part of the title is not going to help me rank in search or do very good SEO, which is when I have the second half of my title, which is not meant to get clicks, but is meant to help me rank in search. So if you look at any of my titles, I have titles like how I gained 11,000 subscribers in less than a month, then like a mark in the middle, and then how to grow on YouTube, how to gain subscribers, or something that will actually make me rank in search. That way I have a compound title where half of the title is getting clicks and the other half of the title is getting me ranked in search. That way, both halves of the title have two different jobs working together to get me more views. So that is what I mean by having much more compelling titles and having titles that actually make people want to click onto your video. Another really tough lesson I had to learn is what happens when you have a camera presence or personality that people just don't vibe with. I can tell you for a fact, everybody I watch on YouTube, all of my favorite YouTubers, all have very relatable personalities that I enjoy watching. Humans crave human interaction. That's straight up psychology and cannot be argued. Why is it that a small part of you dies when your favorite show is over? Because you've become invested in the characters and the show. Why is it that there are other TV shows out there that you just don't vibe with, that you're not interested in and don't really want to watch? Because you don't vibe with the characters or the storyline or the show as a whole. So I realized in looking at some of my older YouTube videos on YouTube growth that I sounded so preachy and like a teacher trying to like teach in a classroom or give a lecture. And I had friends telling me, why were you so aggressive in that video? And then I started realizing, whoa, maybe the way I'm talking on camera is repelling people rather than bringing them in. So I started having a hardcore look at how I was talking on camera and how I was presenting what I was saying. Then a few days ago, I posted on my community tab on YouTube and I asked you guys, what type of vibe do I give off? How do you feel when you watch my videos? And I got loads of comments saying, you feel like that one friend I can go to, you have a very motherly vibe. I feel like when I watch your videos, I'm actually gonna learn something. Which was when I kind of stood back and I was like, wow, 
main goal achieved, I finally got this down. I finally got myself the type of camera presence and personality that actually makes people want to listen to what I have to say. And there have been videos I've watched before where the person's presence is super cold and kind of blocked off and like not the most friendly and just kind of here to shove information at you, which is not the most welcoming camera personality. So maybe if you're having trouble turning views into subscribers, you wanna take a hardcore look at your on-camera presence and see if maybe that's something you can change and or improve. And then another big mistake a lot of YouTubers make is not putting in the effort to connect with their audience. A lot of people assume just make a video, upload to YouTube and boom, there's your audience. However, that's not how it works. Why should they care about you and your content if you don't care about them first? I care immensely for my family and my friends and people who feel like family and friends. And over the last few months, you guys have begun to actually feel like family to me and I've become increasingly invested in your channel growth and seeing you guys succeed. And by feeling like this and investing myself in your channels, you guys have begun to feel like family and friends and I care for you guys a lot. So I put in a lot of effort to do constantly live streams and start conversations in my comment section and have group chats with you guys and make my Facebook group where I can talk to you guys on a more personal level. And by doing all these things, I kind of make you guys feel like less of a number on a screen and more like I'm actually reachable and accessible to you. And lots of you guys have told me, you're the first YouTuber who actually answers my DMs. You're the first YouTuber who actually talks to us and makes an effort to relate to us. And I feel like by doing that, I made myself feel very open to my subscribers and they're much more willing to actually connect with me, which is what you need to achieve if you want the type of audience that drops everything to watch your video and come to your live streams and come to your premieres. Because again, if you don't care about them, why should they care about you? So it should be one priority very, very high on your list for you to build a bond and relationship with your audience and treat them not so much like a number and like actual people with a purpose. Once you have that established for you, you're going to see right away how much more engaged your audience is and how much more willing they are to show up for you. So yeah, you guys, that is it for my newest six top mistakes that a lot of YouTubers, especially new beginners, tend to make on their channels that can possibly contribute to your channel not growing. So hopefully at least one of these things gave you an idea of something to consider or look into, maybe change on your channel. Feel free to let me know down below what that change was because I would love to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all to the moon and back and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.